Good morning. February the 2nd, 2023. I'm ready to start on section, is that four of chapter two? First, we have to show that these two expressions agree. And I was taught while studying that one had to make a serious expansion of this uh, term and So we pro make a product over the primes, and then for each prime, we have a power of this. We call it uh, PR. Uh, yeah, what do we call it? Um, <laughs> IP, which goes from from naught to infinity. And then we try to exchange sum and product. We'll rationalize that in a moment, I hope. And then it's pretty obvious because of um, the character being uh, multiplicative and the power as well. And then we have unique prime factorization that it will summing over all the integers where we only have finite products. Now this um, uh, yeah when we when we exchange then we have a countable number of atoms here. And that was what I didn't understand while I was studying. I couldn't handle these infinities, but we have a countable number of terms here, each being a finite product. And they converge absolutely because the real part of S is larger than 1. And therefore, we can rearrange the series to get this. That was A. For B, I have a program. This is a decreasing sequence. And then when we add, let's say it's uh, a character modulo, modulo m, then when we start at some large number, say n, then we take chi of n, let's say n plus 1, up to chi of n plus m. When the character is non-trivial, the sum of this guy vanishes. So I just make the sum, so I'll split the sum into these guys, and then see if I can make the uh, sum of those partial guys converge. And then since each term tends to to naught, then that will prove convergence. I think we should make a dry run, so we try like with uh, S being real, and then we'll take into account what happens with complex N, where the uh, argument of the different sums varies.
some are positive and some are negative and this is a decrease this is a decreasing series so the mo most positive we can have is for the first And now there are M numbers all together, so it's up to, and we assume M is odd, do we not? Let's assume M odd, doesn't say so though. And for the rest, it's minus one. It's likely to attain the value of uh, naught for quite a lot of them, like uh, the last one, if n is a multiple of m. But I don't think that needs to be taken into account. So this sum can be written in, now oh, it's positive, so I don't want to write all these uh, numeric signs. we just call it the midpoint we do with these sums. Could we just take the worst case where it's uh, like n to minus s times the number of uh, elements we have M half minus, and that's uh, N plus M. So what we have to show is the N minus M, or we have to bound How do we do that? Taylor expansion. This should be larger than, so the difference is smaller than n minus n, 1 minus 1 minus s m divided by n. We 
of course it should go like this um, constantly uh, decreasing therefore a tangent will give a value below so the units is cancel M times S and this has a real part or, or this is smaller than 1 S plus 1 of course so they they sum absolutely so in the real case we have Uh, conditional convergence. Uh, that was the first part. The next part we have to take care of what happens when we are up in the complex plane. should we call it u plus i v Maybe we should lock, write lock, I don't know. So that means it's turned Ln radians. Ah, oh, we don't want to write that. Now, can we control this turning? I mean, if, if, if we were very unlucky, then they could turn so much that, that this would be totally destroyed, that they were, our worst case would be something different. And of course, we lived very much that they weren't pointing in various directions. It was either plus one or minus one, and there were the same number of each of them. Ah, when n is large, ln changes very little. So we can put a bound on the uh, on the argument of the uh, the variation of the arguments. So if we had like only two numbers, adding in some direction and the other one changing a little. And then the subtracting ones were almost opposite direction. Almost opposite direction, just a slight change. Then the dis difference wouldn't be so large. The idea is I want to choose n sufficiently large 
that the total change in argument is very small so that we can repeat the argument on this or that this argument still holds though with a little complication So we could let this be the um, the complex number, and then the the others would have small differences in argument, but only very small. And then I believe the argument would hold again. So that's what I need to make precise. I will make a break and do this by hand and then I'll show you the result. I think I'm ready to continue and we should do it by a number of lemmas. So the sum of the sum, half the sums is in almost the same direction and the other half in almost the opposite direction. So if we have a sum of numbers AI where the arguments of AI are smaller than epsilon, disregarding uh, whatever direction uh, they are almost the same, and then this fact, so the atoms are almost the same. So we just take one direction out, and then say the others very very little from them. we have the sum cosine the arc here let's call it uh, vi so this is we call uh, r and this i times s If the angle is naught, it just becomes the sum of AI. And otherwise, this is larger than one minus, I uh, can't see that. This is uh, larger than one minus minus epsilon squared when epsilon is small. That's too strict, of course, but then this may be equal to and S.
is strictly smaller than or is numeric is strictly smaller than of AI times epsilon. So that's uh, the standard uh, inequalities for the uh, trigonometric functions. If epsilon is naught, then it's equality, right? This holds close to uh, close to unit, close to naught, and the other one in general. All right. So this is if and then then that was the the first lemma we should use. Next we should uh, find such an epsilon choosing n sufficiently large. So that means that the argument no the uh, imaginary part of S, which we call V, times ln n, we shall compare that to, it's smaller than V times ln, and we started adding from capital N, Then the series expansion of Ln That means that the argument of n minus u plus i v, this guy, is uh, minus the argument. Uh, now where am I? Oh yeah, it's N. And here we have N lies in this interval. Then the, the variation from the argument of n to minus u minus uh, plus i n is less than v times ln n times m divided by n. So given V, we can choose N sufficiently large that this difference is less than a given epsilon. And are the absolute values, oh, they tend to naught, so it's easy to choose them sufficiently low. 
I believe combining these actually solves the problem. It's not very nicely written. It's not written so that undergraduates would uh, be convinced, but I'm sure that this is sufficient for you.